Hello and welcome to SVS 101 Introduction to Anthropology. I am Juan Jose Gutierrez and I am your instructor for this semester. Let's go over the contents of chapter 2 of your book. And chapter 2 actually deals with uh, the concept of culture. Culture, which is quite an interesting concept if you have ever spent any time thinking about it. It's something that is everywhere everything is culture but at the same time we expect that you understand and uh, that you're able to define what is culture its um, nuanced uh, complexity and and this chapter is about exploring that um, there's one thing that uh, not many people think about when we they talk about culture and it is the fact that it is based on our evolutionary past culture uh, cannot happen without um, what has happened in, in, in our evolutionary history so we, we have to explore a little bit about it and a good chunk of what's happening in this semester is exploring precisely the evolutionary basis of culture there are three elements that define culture it's universal, general and also particular so we're going to explore what, what, is, what it is meant by being universal, general and particular um, we will also explore what's the relationship between culture and the individual because culture shapes in many ways what the individuals are and by the same token the, a the agency of the individuals will transform the culture in time and uh, last but not least we will talk about globalization which is one very important aspect of our cultural life today which is different from what has happened historically alright let's get going what are the important questions that anthropologists have uh, explored when they have studied culture and when they talk about culture? Well, first of all, what is culture? And why is it important to study culture? And then the relation between culture and the individual, and then change, as we have just uh, mentioned. All right, let's start by exploring what is culture. There are hundreds of definitions of culture, and within the field of anthropology and outside but the way most anthropologists would recognize and address culture is as a system it's a, a series of elements interconnected that is a system and it is a system of human behavior and thought is what we do and why we do it how we explain it but it is a system that also relates to natural laws that is elements that we're wired to doing and um, because it obeys these natural laws it can be studied scientifically and we can have a really solid understanding of what culture is um, and then a, a related concept that is critically important is the concept of enculturation that is the mechanisms by which we acquire that culture we are not born with the culture we have to acquire the culture and that is done by a process uh, of interaction so let me show you this short clip and you'll see how a little baby would will be interacting with the dad and how for example learning a language happens uh, gradually so here's the baby with the eyes wide open and the baby is looking at that and looking at the mouth and how the mouth moves and that is telling the baby say papa so the baby is really alert and magic happens pa 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 isn't she cute <laughs> all right so is that easy that is acculturation it is how we how we uh, learn what we eventually use to navigate our cultural lives um not every animal in the planet or living creature is capable of, of acquiring culture as we are and we do this in an extremely sophisticated manner because we have the capacity to use symbols in ways that are really different from any other animal I want to remind you that symbols are signs uh, that are not necessarily connected to naturally to what we're reflecting but uh, but it it points to that uh, element. For example, green doesn't have anything to do with going, 
but when we see green we know that it means going so we have learned that and that is some uh, that is a cultural symbolic device I think this is quite interesting uh, so culture is learned and um, uh, this is something that anthropologists have paid attention for many many years let's take a look at what Clifford Geertz which he's one of the most famous uh, cultural anthropologists of our age uh, has to say about culture hope you like this clip All right. So, culture is learned, and uh, culture is also shared. Uh, you cannot have a culture of one person and only one person. That's that's n not constitutive of what we understand of culture. Culture is something that uh, helps us and and enable us to relate to each other, and that is probably the main. Objecti objective of culture, that is, th that ability to connect and to be transmitted. And so what we're connecting, what we're um, sharing and, and passing on to other individuals and generations is uh, a series of things that are important. Shared beliefs, values, memories, and expectations. And think, for example, your conversation with your dad, your grandmother, when they tell stories of your of their growing up and whatnot, those stories are fantastic because the those stories transmit the values and the lived experiences of your family, and and that uh, that's a way to share that. And the same happens in the classroom or with friends and whatnot. That's how we share things by um, by talking and by by uh, communicating with this complex set of symbols that uh, uh, is basically what language is. Now, I just mentioned at the beginning of this short presentation that uh, culture and nature are critically um, important to be understood as interconnected. Culture and nature are not different things, are one and the other go together. So culture takes natural biological urges and teaches us how to express them in particular ways. Um, our desires, our needs, our expectations, all of that might have a biological natural base but it is expressed and and tend to by means of cultural devices so um uh, culture is is uh, in, in and of itself sort of a language that transforms biological urges into into action and that's how we address that um I just mentioned that part of the problem of understanding culture is culture is everything. Culture is this computer you're in front of. Culture is this microphone that I'm using to tape this. Culture is uh, clothing. Culture is uh, how you walk. There's just so many things that is uh, that is culture. So um, sometimes uh, it's it seems to be trivial. For example, a hamburger from McDonald's. How can that be culture? We think of culture sometimes as classical music, but now culture is everything we do: sports, games, television. Everything is culture. Um, we're talking about culture as a system, so it's an integrated system and pattern. Um, the way we dress is patterned. The way we cut our hair is patterned. Some, uh, it sometimes is patterned by gender, sometimes it's patterned by age, but we, we know these rules and we apply these rules and those rules become 
become patterns that we can see and we can understand and we can use to navigate and relate. For example, if you're going to be formal, then you know that there's a code for dressing formal. You're going to be cool, then there's a code for being cool. And you need to know those uh, elements and then play uh, by those rules. And, and uh, whether we like it or not, those pattern systems exist and it's something uh, uniquely, fundamentally human. That's the way we, we behave. And um, it represents a number of things, uh, certainly values and, and beliefs. So culture is integrated. Now, culture can be adaptive and maladaptive, meaning culture can really help us solve problems, but sometimes culture can actually lead to serious problems. I don't know if you've, you're familiar with the um, uh, the island of Eastern in the Pacific Ocean, um, and in this island, there's a, there's a big monolithic heads that's that are all over the island, and those are really fascinating to see. Those were sculpted and and um, and uh, erected by the culture that was living there. They needed to use a lot of timber to produce these heads, and each head was uh, representative of of status they were not able to stop that that fight for more and more status and bigger and bigger heads and eventually they got rid of every single tree in the island and that created a major environmental disaster so culturally they 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 learn how to how to use the heads as representation of status but they had to pay a hefty price which is a major eco ecological disaster so in some some instances culture can be maladaptive most ins instances is actually adaptive and helps us survive. Um, we really need to think, and uh, I'm not going to explore in detail uh, here, but we're going to be talking about this during the semester, how the um, evolutionary past of humans actually determines in many ways with the things that we do and how we do things. So we need to exp to explore that and explore our anatomy, brain structure, and and even even at the uh, genetic and biochemical biochem level, what and to what extent the natural bases are determining the way we exp we live and experience culture. But we will talk more about that uh, in the next few sessions. So let's keep going. It's more of that evolutionary basis. Um, this presentation is posted, so you're welcome to go back to iLearn and check this presentation uh, one slide at a, at a time. All right, so I'm going to skip this uh, slide that is also related to the evolutionary basis so that we can talk about the four traits of uh, a culture that are, three traits of culture that are important to understand. First of all, culture is universal. There, There's a there are universal traits that are unique to our species but that we share regardless of what country we live in, what region we live in. Some are psychological traits, uh, how we're scared, how we laugh, um, how we experience fear. All of those things are, are very much so universal and, in, um, and you can find the same reactions uh, in every single culture. Um, it has to do with how our brains are wired, and that is how our brains are structured. Culture is also general, that is, uh, happens in many different places. Uh, we drive in most countries of the planet, and that is a cultural device, the car. It has to do with uh, understandings and desires and whatnot. And uh, the driving is, is, a, is a cultural trait that is general, but it's something that has been um, has started in some place and then by diffusion has reached other places. So there are many things that are general and, um, and that's another aspect of, of culture that can be transmitted from one place to another. But last but not least, uh, culture is also particular. That is, um, there are m very specific instances that relate to certain areas that are unique of that place and that's when we go to New Mexico or we go to Yucatan you, you're going to find very specific elements in those places that are 
unique and really interesting that uh, we have eyes to see those cultural differences that are particular to those places. So it's universal, general, and, and uh, also particular. And um, I also want to talk a little bit about uh, how culture is, uh, affe affects individuals and is affected by individuals. So as with the example with the baby, we can see how culture is actually shaping the way we say things and we see things. Uh, I don't know if you have given much thought to it, but uh, when we say th certain words, those words are charred with meaning. And that meaning is something we have inherited. And those meanings help us decipher and understand our world. So we see the world um, based on those words. So we're born in a language and the language shapes our understandings. So um, we'll talk more about this issue. But um, So culture shapes the individual. But then also the individual has power over the um, over th over culture in which an indivi individual can actually affect how culture goes. Now let's look at shortly about levels of culture. So I I, I talked about um, culture being a uh, universal, general, in particular, but also there are different levels of culture. We can share a certain aspect with people of a nation. And then we can have also things that we share in common with other nations. And uh, by the same token, we can have uh, certain elements and patterns, cultural patterns that uh, exist within a larger culture. So the cowboy culture is a subculture within the larger culture, which is sort of a national culture of the US. Not everyone is a cowboy in the US, right? But, but cowboys are certainly part of, of what the U.S. Uh, as a national culture is. So here's a few examples of, um, of how of different levels of culture. So for example, for um, at the international level, lots of people play soccer and basketball. Lots of people eat pizza all over the planet. Nationally, not everyone drives a monster truck. That's very American. And uh, and apple pie seems to be quite uh, quite an American uh, type of food. And subculturally, uh, well, you know, there's there's elements that are just uh, specific of certain areas, like. Uh, Big Joe pork barbecue, and I think I'm I'm getting hungry now, and I think I would like to certainly try those South Carolina um, uh, ribs. All right, a uh, couple of more concepts, uh, and then uh, I'll let you go so that you can read the chapter: ethnocentrism, cultural relativism, and human rights. These are concepts that you really need to explore this semester and try to get a solid understanding of it. Ethnocentrism is some, something we tend to uh, distance ourselves as anthropologists from, which means a tendency of, uh, kind of a natural tendency, to view my culture as superior and as the one that uh, should be the standard for other cultures. And believe you me, that is something that it's done by every single individual in every country. You go to Argentina, if you go to Spain, if you go to Russia, if you go to the US, everyone thinks that my way or the highway. And uh, somehow the plant is getting shorter and we need to uh, understand that there might be other rulers to measure similar things. And we need to learn how to cope with that. And that's part of what anthropology is trying to grapple with. Cultural relativism um, states that um, ethnocentric views are, are inappropriate because uh, each society has different standards and we should respect those standards. Uh, it's, a, it's a complicated concept and problematic and we will uh, approach this more carefully later on. Think for example if there's a culture in which it is okay to um, to um, to have women uh, covered by a veil uh, for her entire life. Well maybe Maybe that's okay in their culture, but maybe it is a violation of human rights. So we need to talk about it. And and the same applies to every single nation and culture, but I'm, I'm just giving you one example. The example of the burkas, that it's quite controversial, and we can talk about it. Uh, something foreign to us, and therefore something that we tend to judge easily. 
but it's complicated. All right. Um, let's take a look at this short clip. In this clip, which I will just uh, start, shows a culture that is trying to make a living of whaling. Oh, should we respect that? Should we not? Because whaling is banned universally, but they they want to do that. They, they want to live off, off of whaling. So you're welcome to take a look at this clip later on when you come back and and review my slides. That is the link that is right right below this one that you used to open this presentation. All right. So um, I'm going to leave it at that so that you can uh, engage with the reading. Um, go ahead and read that, that chapter and make sure to participate in the forum. I look forward to seeing you there and addressing some of your questions. All right.